Councilman David Rue is referring to the latest addition of fire engines that were made possible by the SAFER grant, a federal grant that was awarded to the Los Angeles Fire Department last year. The $15.4 million federal grant helped fund these four fire trucks with the additional staff that was needed. The $15 million grant application was awarded by the Federal Emergency Management Agency to fund 48 firefighter positions. With this grant, we were able to restore firefighter positions to fire stations 1, 20, 73, and 75 in the communities of Mission Hills, Reseda, Echo Park, and Lincoln Heights. These fire engines and firefighters come at a much needed time. The summer fire season now is in high gear and every Angelino has a role to play. So we have to be prepared for any situation. We have to be aware of what we can do to clear brush, to alert people quickly when we see things. And when the rising temperatures and drier weather bring with them more intense and dangerous fires, it's absolutely imperative that we remain vigilant. Councilman Bob Blumenfield's district also experienced the benefit of having these additional fire engines available. We had a, a commercial fire and they were able to make a, a, a dramatic impact to prevent uh, the spread of that fire. So we're already seeing the benefits of these engines and this engine company. Uh, and this is a banner day for the city where we are going to be protected and safer. This grant from FEMA was the largest grant in the program's 12-year history. From the Dodger Stadium, I'm Rasha Goel for LA This Week. Officials say in 2011, the Los Angeles Fire Department was heavily impacted when 300 positions, 7 truck companies and 11 engine companies were permanently eliminated. This grant has helped provide those much needed resources. Well, fire services eliminated during the Great Recession have returned to some of the hottest parts of the city. Gil Reyes reports from one simmering section of the San Fernando Valley. Families in the great community of Reseda are safer this summer now that a fire engine company absent for seven years is back in action. I sleep better at night and I hope all of you sleep better at night knowing that we have these resources to protect all of you, all of you kids that are here, all of the community that's around here. Valley Councilman Bob Blumenfield welcomed the new engine company to Reseda's Fire Station 73. The old engine company was slashed by the budget acts of the Great Recession. But now with the economy improving, it is back and with a shiny new engine, plus 12 more firefighters at the station to operate the vehicle. They've arrived just in time. We see that the call loads are increasing and it's putting a greater demand in our department. So this will facilitate our success in providing that public safety and emergency services. A $15 million federal grant has helped restore engine companies axed during the recession. The city kicked in an extra $10 million for good measure. Engine companies in Mission Hills, Echo Park, and Lincoln Heights are also back in action. In Reseda, I'm Gil Reyes for LA This Week. The city has hired 48 new firefighters to free up staff to operate the four newly restored engine companies. Councilman Blumenfield says he's worked with the firefighters union to help increase funding for services over the past several years. Well, you might be able to catch a few more Z's in the morning before hopping on that bus to work. That's because Metro's new all-door boarding service is speeding things up. Anna Marcos explains. Mayor Eric Garcetti is throwing out Metro tap cards like they're confetti. And Metro bus riders are going to want those tap cards. That's because boarding the bus from any door and tapping your card is about to become the new wave of the future. The Vermont Avenue Rapid Bus Line 754 becomes one of the first bus lines to get all-door boarding. And Garcetti wants to make sure you know how to use it. Enter from any bus door and tap your card. If you don't have one, you can buy one at the front of the bus. Transportation happiness, things that we want to do to make sure that as you move in and around our city, um, you have guarantees around things that, it, that, it, that transportation will be reliable, that it will be affordable, that it will be equitable. As part of the transportation revolution, we're going to make sure that saving you time and customers being first is our number one priority. City leaders say the all-door boarding program cuts down on the time buses spend idling at bus stops since more people can board at once. 
A trial run of the program on the San Pedro Silver Line has resulted in a 10% improvement in on-time performance. People on our trains, people on our buses deserve to make sure they have a more pleasurable, faster, better experience. Faster boardings mean a faster trip. A faster trip means more people will use the system. More people using the system means that there will be less gridlock on our streets. And come October, the Rapid Line 720 on Wilshire Boulevard will also hop onto the all-door boarding program. So get ready for a smoother, quicker ride on Metro as more buses open their doors to all-door boarding. I'm Anna Marcos for LA This Week. The new service on the Vermont Rapid Bus Line 754 began in July. Well, where in Los Angeles can you experience a beautiful mix of nature and culture? Well, Rasha Goel has more on an iconic festival that has become a favorite among Angelinos. It's an exciting time to experience these beautiful lotus flowers in Los Angeles while getting a taste of different Asian cultures. This year's 38th Lotus Festival was held at Echo Park Lake and had plenty for people to enjoy. We have such a large Asian Pacific American presence in Los Angeles and that really is why the Lotus Festival was born uh, over 38 years ago now and it's an opportunity sort of to take stock in our rich cultural diversity that we have here. Every year there's a different host country. This year's was China. A fun fact, it was in 1932 at LA's first Olympics where the first Chinese athletes competed. 43 percent of the goods that come into America come through our port and the port of Long Beach. Most of that comes from China. We also see the importance of cultural exchange and educational exchange and we just love each other. I there was a variety of food to choose from, games, crafts, and so much for the entire family. And some enjoyed the lake. Or for those who were up for some competition, there were dragon boat races. Among the competitors this year were members from Council District 1 and 13 who showed off their skills in the water. And the winner? Council District 13 between the two. For some here, it's a festival they've attended for years. It's definitely a great event. Like I said, I've been coming here since I was a kid, so it's something that, for me, it's nostalgic, you know, to come and bring my kid now and have her experience the same thing that I experienced as a kid. The Lotus Festival was held for two days. I'm Rasha Goel for LA This Week. Echo Park can also be enjoyed year-round thanks to a $47 million improvement plan. Well, mainstays at downtown's successful Art Walk talk about its history, their favorite parts and improvements they want to see. Gil Reyes reports from the Spring Art Tower at the heart of this popular stroll. For one night out of the month, it's busier than usual in downtown. People fill the streets for several blocks to sample art and live music at more than 35 welcoming galleries. It is Art Walk Night. Art Walk has been going on for 14 years. It's the second Thursday of every single month, rain or shine, hot or cold. We're, we're here on the streets of downtown Los Angeles, mostly Spring, Maine, and then the connecting streets to the downtown financial district. We spoke to Art Walk Executive Director Catherine Brem at Spring Arts Tower. This old bank building is now home to several studios and the last bookstore. Established at its current location in 2011, California's largest book and record store is a maze of hanging books, public art, hidden side rooms, and more than 100,000 paperbacks and hardcovers for sale. The studio of assemblage artist David Lovejoy is also located at Spring Arts Tower. Yes, I started as a clay artist, and actually uh, it was moving into Pasadena about 12 years ago that, that changed that for me. Why? What happened? I moved into an old craftsman home, my wife and I, and the electrical system there couldn't support my kilns, so I couldn't fire anything for several months. So he turned his attention to piecing things together out of spare parts. A lot of interesting things to see at David Lovejoy Studio, and everything's for sale. His favorite piece? I think my favorite piece in here is the Jangalodian piano that's here behind me. 
and it is my favorite because of the interactivity of it. I have great experiences with strangers because of that, because it's an instrument that's meant to be played by several people at once. A communal experience, Art Walk has given much needed exposure to local artists and continues to be a vital part of downtown's resurgence. Its popularity is the reason why Wren Gallery owner Renee Warner opened her space in downtown, but she has one request. I'd like to change it to being a weekend event because I think it's a little difficult, especially as how busy as downtown is now with all the construction for people to get down here on a Thursday night. So I would love to see Art Walk on a Saturday or a Sunday. That would be the only change I'd ever make to it. <laughs> Bring comfortable shoes and we'll see you there. At Downtown LA's Art Walk, I'm Gil Reyes for LA This Week. Downtown LA Art Walk also offers tours of must-see exhibitions and events. Find out more at downtownartwalk.org. Well, it's one way to eat out and pay less. The Dine LA program appears to have a winning recipe for any money-conscious food lovers out there. Anna Marcos herself does a little culinary exploration at one participating restaurant. Anna. Yana, want to take a bite of the LA gastronomic experience? With the Dine LA program, you can take that big bite while it takes a smaller bite out of your pocket. Mm. This is the Thai iced tea we offer here at Rehab Noodles. A Thai iced tea, simple syrup and lime. The lunchtime crowd is filling the house at the We Have Noodles restaurant in Silver Lake, a place to get just about any kind of Asian noodle dish. And restaurant managers say the Dine LA program, which they've joined, is definitely helping to make their business sizzle. Well, considering we're a new restaurant, it just kind of helps bring the awareness about what we're doing around here, uh, especially in this neighborhood. Uh, there's a lot of competition, a lot of restaurants. Um, so being a part of Dine LA just helps us spread the word. Dine LA is celebrating 10 years of tantalizing Angelino Foodies taste buds. Twice a year in summer and fall, some 400 restaurants join the Dine LA experience for 15 days. What that means for you is that these restaurants offer special value meals, which often include three courses and are about 20% off the regular menu. All you have to do is ask for the Dine LA menu to get the special deals. I would imagine it's just like an event that draws people in, so yeah, probably they get to try more stuff than they normally would. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a, it's more so for the experience, I think, than, you know, the actual discount or anything. Still, many of us like both the food scene experience and the discount. Dine LA is the best time to get out there and explore LA through its food. We have the best food scene in the country right now. We're a big melting pot of cultures here in LA. LA has so many different pockets and each neighborhood and pocket has such a great food scene. In fact, since Dine LA began, LA has become a culinary mecca, often making it on food lists as one of the food hotspots in the country. And as if you needed any more motivation to chow down, here's one more. The Dine LA Golden Dish Giveaway. So this season we are giving away 100,000 American Airlines miles, which is very exciting. So one winner is going to be handed this golden dish. And it's totally random. So if you're ever eating at a Dine LA participating restaurant, you just might get presented with the check and a golden dish. Just one more incentive to become a Dine LA foodie. I'm Anna Marcos for LA This Week. For more information on Dine LA and on which restaurants are participating, visit DineLA.com. Well, here's one way to get kids to read. Bring in an LA Dodgers player to read to them. The Summer Library Reading Series does just that. Kids at Echo Park's Edendale Library found themselves face-to-face -face with L.A. Dodgers player Ross Stripling. Anna Marcos takes us there. Oh, wait, I changed my mind again. Sorry. <laughs> All-Stars L.A. Dodgers pitcher Ross Stripling doesn't just know how to play ball. He can work a room of 100 kids and keep them entertained with his reading skills. It's all part of the L.A. Public Library's Summer Library Reading Series in a joint effort with the L.A. Dodgers Foundation. Make a scary face. Uh, I like the first book I read where everyone like got up, I like told them to stand up and then sit back down and stand up and they had to act like there was a bug on their nose and then in their mouth. 
Uh, that was funny. When have you seen kids pay this much attention to the three R's? Well, I know um, yesterday the Dodgers won, so I'm pretty proud of them, so let's go Dodgers. But this wasn't just all about entertainment. There was also a pitch for reading, staying educated, and staying in school. We uh, have been partnering and having the Dodgers come and provide story times. We have 10 this year. I think it's important to have a role model and someone that they can uh, look up to and say, you know, hey, reading's important, education's important, going to college is important, and uh, set you up for a bright future. And, and uh, hopefully that resonates with them, even if it just resonates with one kid, then that, that works. Involve cats or feathers because they make them sneeze. Apparently, at least one kid was listening. So what does he think this reading pitch is all about? So we can learn when we grow up and then we get smarter. All right, what do you want to do when you grow up? I want to be a marine biologist. That's pretty smart. All I have to do is just learn how to swim. I think it's pretty cool because then it, it has like, the younger kids have their role models and they get us, have them teach them something. You guys good with baseball? Who likes baseball? Anybody? We got Dodger fans in here? And of course, it wouldn't be a Dodgers reading series without some kind of baseball. This book about a kid who keeps striking out and then finally wins big after many tries seemed to hit the spot. A little inspiration and a lot of fun and games. A recipe that might turn a few more of these kids into lifelong readers. I'm Anna Marcos for LA This Week. This was the third library to get a Dodgers visit this year in the Summer Library Reading Series. The LA Fire Department expands on a successful pilot program. Salsa lovers come out in droves for some dancing and eating, and a busy stretch of Beverly Boulevard is about to get a lot safer. All these stories in City B. LAFD Chief Ralph Terrassa has joined local hospital officials to announce the expansion of the successful Advanced Provider Response Unit program. Two and a half years after launching the first APRU, the LAFD has added three new units to its fleet, providing direct advanced on-scene medical care to patients who may not require immediate transportation to the emergency room. Two additional units will be coming online soon. 50% of the time, the APRU can treat and release a patient on scene, thereby eliminating a lengthy hospital transport, a very expensive hospital bill, while at the same time helping to ease emergency room overcrowding. The two-day, third annual Latin Salsa Festival came to Pershing Square recently, featuring live salsa music and dancing, salsa tastings, and margarita vendors. More than 20,000 folks came out for the weekend festival, the organizer said she grew up with salsa festivals in her hometown and wanted to bring it to L.A. So I decided to organize a festival, a yearly festival, that would include salsa dancing, salsa tasting, salsa music. Los Angeles City Council Member Mitch O'Farrell and the city's Bureau of Street Services broke ground on improvements along a two-and-a-half-mile stretch of Beverly Boulevard to create a walkable, more pedestrian-friendly environment. The improvements include new crosswalks, curb ramps, driveways, enhanced irrigation, trees, and bike racks. All will be concentrated at busy intersections within commercial and residential areas. A new green food oasis just popped up in downtown LA. Union Station just got its first farmer's market. Anna Marcos takes us there. Union Station is no longer just a place to catch a ride. You can also catch your weekly dose of greens and other healthy foodstuffs before hopping on the train or bus. A new farmer's market has sprouted at the downtown LA landmark. I love farmer market stuff. I always like to buy fresh. That's me. Fresh fruit, fresh vegetables all the time, every day. It took several years of talks with Union Station, but farmer's market organizers finally got their slot and it looked pretty popular even on the first day of business. We have nuts, hummus, everything you could want, drinks, everything, flowers, the whole nine yards, we've got it. The empanadas were delicious and the avocado toast was to die for. And that avocado toast has plenty of healthy green stuff on it too. Or for the cholesterol lovers, the mayo and pastrami is right next door, or ham or whatever you want. 
The point is you can find just about anything to eat, cooked and uncooked, blue, green, orange, or red. I think it's a wonderful idea to bring it. It's about time that they bring something like this to downtown LA at Union Station. You can take a ride to healthier eating and grocery shopping at the Union Station Farmer's Market every Thursday from 12 to 6 and even have a drink on the side. I'm Anna Marcos for LA This Week. For more info, visit the Farmer's Market website at ccfm.com. Do you miss going to the drive-in? Well, here's your chance to relive some memories or make new ones. Enjoy a Shakespeare play in the valley and experience a new bold flavor and culture at the Taste of Ecuador. All this in this week's Things to Do. My Valley Pass presents its second annual San Fernando Valley Summer Drive-In Nights, benefiting the Valley Relics Museum. Last year's drive-in event brought movie fans from all over LA to the Lake Balboa Complex for four nights of films shot in the San Fernando Valley that included E.T., Back to the Future, The Karate Kid, and La Bamba. This year's movie lineup will be just as much fun with Fast Times at Richmond High, Back to the Future Part 2, Pee-wee's Big Adventure, and Selena, which will be presented on a 60-foot screen in a retro drive-in setting. Each evening features pre-show music, food trucks, and special guests. This year will also include upgrades to the film's audio and projection capabilities, as well as the facilities. The drive-in nights take place August 3rd through the 11th from 6.30 p.m. to 10 p.m. at the Lake Balboa Complex in Van Nuys. For more, visit myvalleypass.com. For audiences seeking quality family entertainment, Shakespeare by the Sea's free performances can be beat. Pack a picnic, a blanket and beach chair, gather loved ones and settle in under the stars for a night of classic entertainment. On Saturday, August 4th, enjoy the Merry Wives of Windsor, taking place at the Los Encinos State Historic Park, located at 16756 Moore Park Street in Encino. Come out and celebrate the 20th annual Taste of Ecuador Food Festival and Parade. More than 10,000 Ecuadorians and 5,000 other folks from different nationalities will enjoy a full menu of Ecuadorian cuisine and some other well-known food dishes. Attendants will also enjoy Ecuadorian crafts, musical groups, folklore customs, commercial products, free gifts, carnival games, and more. The 20th annual parade starts at 11 a.m. on Broadway and 7th Street, going north on Broadway until 4th Street, then Main Street, ending at Placida Alvera. The parade will have car clubs, dance groups, drill teams, convertibles, motorcycles, 24 beauty queens, and various businesses. It all takes place Sunday, August 5th, from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. at 425 North Los Angeles Street. And that's a look at some things to do. You always know you're in for a rockin' good time at the Central Avenue Jazz Festival. And what's not to like? This year there were four music stages instead of three, one dedicated entirely to jam sessions. We've never had that before. Jazz is about improvisation. Uh, just pass and see and listen. Just listen. You don't dance? No. <laughs> you don't dance? No, I don't know how to dance. Okay, we all know people come for the jazz, but Council District 9 organizers weren't just watching out for your musical well-being. They were after your health and financial well-being as well. Checking my blood pressure. There were four pavilions, one covering things like health and screening checkups. CD9 um, it has a lot of residents that don't have access to top-notch health care, and we want to make sure that we are participating as, as a good partner um, in the community, uh, assisting our residents to get quality health care. There was a pavilion for jobs and business opportunities. We've always had this pavilion, um, but this year we made sure that we were focusing on bringing in organizations that had jobs available now. Another pavilion focused on the arts, while a fourth focused on youth. And this year, LACMA teamed up to teach children art classes, while another class taught regular old folks like you and me how to get that Latin drum rhythm going. 
We have Latin percussion for the first time again this year, uh, doing a rumba in the park. They'll be teaching uh, children, youth, adults how to drum. And if you needed to take a breather from all that Latin drumming and jazz jamming, and all the great music by Pete Escovito and Earth, Wind and Fire, well, not only was there food to relax with, for the first time, there were food trucks. The people will come for the music, but they'll stay for the fun. This jazz festival provided food for the soul, mind, body, and even your pocketbook. I'm Anna Marcos for LA This Week. Well, that's going to do it for this edition. I'm Yana Kane from all of us here at LA This Week. Thanks for joining us. A reminder that you can catch us online at lacityv.org. You can also follow and like us on Facebook. We'll see you back here next week for more of LA This Week. My dog whip it. We're from Winnetka. Get it, girl. You're watching LA City View, channel 35. This is our city and our channel.
Good morning. Whoa. Good, good morning. Today is Tuesday, July 31st. I want to welcome you back to City Hall. Uh, this council meets Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Friday. Public is welcome. Madam Clerk, we have a quorum. Could you please call the roll? Bloomingfield, Bonin, Buscaino, Cedillo, Englander, Herstassen, Weiser, Caretz, Krikorian, Martinez, O'Farrell, Price, Rodriguez, Rue, Wesson, 11 members present, and a quorum, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, first order of business. Approval of the minutes. Uh, Martinez moves, Rodriguez seconds. Next. Commendatory resolutions for approval. Weizar moves, Caret seconds. Next. Mr. President, today is Tuesday and time for the flag salute. Why don't we all rise and we'll be led today, all rise for our flag salute, we'll be led by Mr. Buscaino. With, with great honor, Mr. President, place a flag. Right hand over your heart, ready to begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. What's up, man? Thank you, Mr. Buscaino. Thank you very much. Shh. If we could go through the remainder of the agenda. Mr. President, there are requests to continue several items, item 1A to August 29th, item 30 to August 14th, and item 38 to January 30th of 2019. Okay, thank you, and so ordered, continue. In regards to item 18 on today's agenda, the applicant has requested an extension to October 15th of 2018 for consideration of the appeal. There is a request to refer this item back to the Plum Committee for the public hearing. Okay, so ordered. Continue. Items 1 through 18 are items noticed for public hearing. Do you have cards? Yes, there are cards on all items. Then continue, please. Items 19 through 32 are items for which public hearings have been held. For the record, on item 19, please note that the ordinance referenced in recommendation number 1 was incorrectly dated June 26, 2018 on the July 3rd agenda but is correctly identified on this agenda as dated November 9th, 2017. Okay. Specials, Mr. Wizar. Uh, let's hold 28. Any other specials? I don't see any. Let's prepare to vote on the remaining items. Excuse me, Mr. President. There is also actually a request to hold item 20 for an amending motion. Okay, we'll do that as well. So let's prepare to vote on the remaining items. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. Continue. Items 33 through 42 are items for which public hearings have not been held. 10 votes are required for consideration. Okay, so, so without objection, those items are now before this body. Do you have cards on these items? Yes, there are cards on all items. All right, continue please. Mr. President, it takes council back to presentations, items called special or general public comment. Okay, Mr. Wezar, I'm gonna recognize Mr. Wezar to start things off. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President, and I uh, want to welcome everybody back from our break, and it's a great way to start today by talking about the uh, place that the City of Los Angeles has in the international scene. In 1959, the City of Los Angeles uh, got its first ever sister city with the City of Nagoya in Japan, and today we have the distinct pleasure to welcome students, chaperones, and board members of the Los Angeles-Nagoya Sister City Affiliation, or LANSCA uh, for short. I would like to take a moment to recognize some of our exchange students from Japan. Mayu Ono, Naoya Kito, Mas Misato Takagi, Aoi Hamasaki, and their chaperone Takako Morioka. Give them a big welcome. Thank you so much for being with us. And also our exchange students that represented the city of Los Angeles in Nagoya. We have with us Laurent Chang, Trinity Custodio, Yanni Martinez and Brianna Morales. Thank you so much for joining us and for your representation of Los Angeles and Japan. Thank you. 
And although she couldn't be here with us today, I would like to thank Teruko Weinberg, our chairperson of the Los Angeles Nagoya Sister City Affiliation, for helping set this up. And she's always done a wonderful job working with the city of Los Angeles to keep the Sister City program going strong with Nagoya. And lastly, I would like to thank Lanska board and committee members, Peter Langenberg, Holly Sally, Moises De Leon, and Dickie Poré. Without their work uh, and dedication, this wonderful program of exchange students wouldn't be possible. At this point, I would like to invite Peter Langenberg, Lanska board treasurer and past chair, to say a few words. Welcome, Peter. Thank you, Thank you very much, Congressman. Thank you. Uh, Welcome. Uh, we are very pleased today to have exchange students from our sister city in Nagoya. The first student exchange began in 1960, and every year um, students from Los Angeles have been going to Nagoya, and the next year students from Nagoya come to Los Angeles. And these are all high school students, and I think for many of them it is a life-changing experience to go to a totally different culture, to experience new languages, new customs, new foods, new ways of living. Um, it is a program that we're very proud of and we hope to continue for many years into the future. Um, so with that, um, I thank you very much. Thank Let's you. give him another round of applause. We thank you. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Langenberg, and uh, thank you to all the students who participated. We look forward to continuing our friendship and uh, the, the ongoing partnership that we had for many, many years. And what better way to do it with our young people who could take on that partnership to future generations. Thank you, and welcome. thank you again so much. Okay, Mr. Weezer, while you're standing, why don't we take up your item, the item 28 at this point? So, Madam Clerk, we're on item 28. <coughs> thank you very much, Mr. President. And um, I would like to first thank my colleagues on the Homeless and Poverty Committee and city staff and the city homeless coordinator for all their work as we continue to search for solutions to the crisis of homelessness. And uh, nowhere in the city is this crisis more urgent than on Skid Row, where 2,000 individuals sleep every night on our streets unsheltered. The most recent homeless count found that during the day, or we find about 4,200 Angelinos experiencing homelessness on Skid Row. And even as we make progress in some areas of the city, Skid Row continues to grow. In the last two years, we have seen an increase of more than 300 unsheltered residents. Uh, that growth alone is more than what many communities have a total number of. Uh, so it is appropriate that we put a special focus on that challenge, that is Skid Row, and my office is committed to finding locations and resources for the shelter and other services that are required to address this humani humanitarian crisis. Before, cre cri before recess, we discussed the potential shelter site in Koreatown, and in that discussion I was moved, and I'm sure you all were by our President's remarks, as to how important it is to address this issue head on. Well, today we are making a similar commitment by tackling the homelessness that is at our front door and here at the Civic Center. The former Children's Museum across the street is vacant, and it is a perfect opportunity to provide needed shelter. Every day we have seen more and more people living unsheltered around City Hall. While we are in the process of redesigning the Civic Center through the Civic Center Master Plan, it makes sense for us to use the former Children's Museum as a shelter as we move forward on that Civic Center master plan. It is imperative that we move forward with a plan to bring emergency temporary bridge housing to serve the thousands who sleep on the streets of Skid Row, and we do it as quickly as possible, and I fully support utilizing the Children's Museum to make that possible. So I wanna also uh, acknowledge that today we are moving forward with uh, finding a private site with the cooperation of the owners and the county to make this opportunity possible as well. There are many leasing opportunities ar around as well that we could make use of. For the citywide homelessness strategy, all of us have been looking at city-owned sites in our districts for possible shelter, housing, and other facilities. But unfortunately, what the report makes clear is that we do not have many city-owned properties in the Skid Row area or throughout the city to make it possible. And that's why we have to think more creatively and work with the private sector to find places we can lease to shelter people who need it. 
By working with the county at 1426 Paloma Street, we will make use of a lease arrangement to create perhaps 120 shelter beds. I expect we will have to do more leases in the future in order to create the hundreds of beds that we need. With the funding that the mayor and the council have now committed to develop shelter, the time is ripe to take action. We have money in the UB, we have money coming from the state to make it possible, and we have no more excuses now. I urge a A vote to move forward with these two properties and to continue to look at additional sites to address the crisis here at our step at Skid Row and around the Civic Center. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Wiesar. Madam Clerk, on this item, if you would please open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. Good work. Okay, let's uh, continue here. I think I'm gonna take some general public comment for a minute. Do we have uh, Genesis, Jerez, Sandy, Logan, Vince, Lewis, Raul Verdugo, Marina Centron? Please come forward if I called your name. Please, please uh, come forward. It was the comment uh, general was satisfied in committee and that item has been moved forward. All right, yes, please identify yourself. Uh, good morning, my name is Sandy Logan and I'm here in regards to the CUV conditions. Um, I just wanted to let you know that it's important for us to have general public comment in regards to our community and our off sale outlets. Um, we have information surrounding these community outlets on alcohol, and we wanted to let you share that information so you can make a better decision when it comes to our communities and what's happening in our communities. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Hi, my name is Vince. I'm a resident of Chinatown, and I also work in Koreatown. Um, and in both neighborhoods, Asian American small businesses are the lifeblood um, of these communities. But a culture of community and cooperation also is required to help a neighborhood thrive. And any effort in this chamber to automatically give a business their CUP with no public process uh, prevents us from fostering that culture of community and co cooperation. Residents have the right to participate in the public process and negotiate conditions for a proposed business. Each application requires a nuanced eye to assess how they will fit into this complex community that they are moving into. By permitting a CUP with no public process, you polarize residents to oppose any and all applications. Residents who would otherwise have been content with working with a business to agreed upon, mutually agreed upon set of operating standards. So please allow our communities to have a say in what types of business come into their neighborhoods. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Hello, my name is Marina Centron. I wanted to speak on item 30. Uh, this ordinance looks to promote on sale alcohol businesses, which is not a bad thing. However, there is one point I want to make. It's rare for a city to deny any alcohol business as it stands today. And it is so, um, and, and taking away the power without allowing community input to the current process, then there will be a lack of balance with, within each community. Um, and, and it won't take into all of the considerations of the public health and wellness for each community because we know each community has different circumstances and the community members are best to be, are, are our best to speak on those issues. Thank you. Thank you. Come forward. Hi, my name is Raul Verdugo. I'm a resident of District 5, and I work for Alcohol Justice, and I'm here as a member of LA DAPA. I'd just like to express my discontent and opposition to item 30, and I think we should work to promote and preserve public comment when it comes to determining, uh, excuse me, determining uh, business expansion and when it comes to alcohol and community welfare and community safety. Thank you. Thank you. M Mar Marina, you did speak. What about Genesis Jerez and Ruben Rodriguez? I'll call Charles Porter, Marina Paz, Dina uh, Cruz. Please come forward and identify yourself.
Adeline Bertha. Good morning. Thank you. My name is Ruben Rodriguez, and I'm executive director of Pueblo Salud out in the city of San Fernando, and also a member of the Los Angeles Drug and Alcohol Policy Alliance. And we're here just to speak against the idea that um, liquor permits should be granted without community input. Uh, I think this is taking us back to uh, before the Watts riots when uh, we had too many liquor stores or liquor outlets. I know this is on site. But um, it's a really bad idea to take us back and not have community input uh, in opposing a liquor license. Uh, it, it's uh, really, we're catering to the liquor industry one more time. Uh, we have enough problems. We've had over concentration of uh, uh, liquor outlets for many years in minority neighborhoods. And uh, we need to be reminded that this is not new business, as the motion indicates. Alcohol industry. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next speaker, please identify yourself. Good morning, Charles Porter. I work with United Coalition East Prevention Project in the Skid Row area. And I echo concerns that were previously mentioned about the lack of community input in regards to alcohol uses. Um, per, uh, particularly uh, in the Skid Row neighborhood, we have great concerns about the proliferations of restaurants downtown, and we want to make sure we have those uh, added protections in place. And any expedited process will only uh, double or triple the, the amount of alcohol requests that come into our communities. Um, additionally, I want to uh, thank all of the support that you've been given uh, for Skid Row. Um, the community has really been mobilizing to make improvements and all the resources you can match with community vision um, just makes projects like the refresh spot even better. And so we, uh, we ask you to continue to support the, uh, the grassroots advocacy in Skid Row and um, dedicate resources to partnering with community members. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Good morning, my name is Dina Cruz and I oppose motion 170981. I am a resident of Boyle Heights, but I also have the honor to serve as area two officer for the Boyle Heights Neighborhood Council. I am deeply concerned that we will not have the opportunity to weigh in on one of my community's top concerns, alcohol sales. And as it is, existing on-site alcohol businesses are unregulated and the state nor the city have the uh, capacity to enforce and ensure that the standards are being implemented and our quality of life is being compromised. I also want our board to have the opportunity to provide input on this motion. Thank you. Thank you. So if I could get, as the next speaker's coming up, if I could get General Jeff, uh, is it Nadia Gonzalez, Tracy Walker, Socorro Chacon. Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Adeline Bertha. I'm a resident of Council District 1, and I work for Social Model Recovery Systems. I am against the proposed motion for item 30 because under no circumstances should we, we the public, the community, lose the right and ability to comment and appeal a proposal that will affect our community. The proposal is asking you all, I quote, to create a process for low intensity businesses seeking CBU permit approvals but there is no low intensity business when there's appalling amount of high alcohol density. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please come identify yourself. Good morning. My name is Nidia Gonzalez, and I'm, I'm a Boyle Heights resident council from the District 14. I'm here to opposition the motion item 30 that I will take away my right to provide the input during the process and apply for sell alcohol licenses. It's necessary that we, as members of the community, be notified since we are suffering the consequences. Please take in consideration my concerns and don't, do not take away my right to do my input. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Socorro Chacon. I live in uh, Council District 9, 
and I'm a member of a larger coalition, and I'm here representing my coalition concerns regarding the motion 170981, that definitely will reduce expenses to the city, but unfortunately will exclude the public from being included. Our concerns are that our voice or concerns are not being taken in consideration since many alcohol licenses with community oppositions are being approved. With this motion, our voice will be completely shut. Thank you. Thank you. And as our next speaker is coming forward, can I get Jace uh, or JC, but I think it's Jace, Margot Bennett, and Pearson? Yes, ma'am. Identify yourself, please. Yes, so good morning. My name is Tracy Walker. I'm from Council District 13. I'm also on the East Hollywood Neighborhood Council and on the Public Safety Committee. And I would like to speak out regarding item number 30 and how it will affect our communities in the way of public safety. Uh, many people that I know very well have experienced the um, blowback that alcohol creates in the community, being that it will affect the public safety of the community, I think it's important to allow the public to speak out on such an item. Thank you. General. Good morning, City Council. My name is General Jeff from Skid Row. I want to speak to you about two items this morning. Uh, one is uh, agenda item 30 uh, about the CUPs. Um, it is a big problem to uh, expedite this process to the point where you cut out the community voice, the community input. Um, there's community impact statements. Um, there's a lot that needs to be um, um, added and continued in terms of a part of this process. It doesn't make sense to try to omit that process and we should fight this and we will continue to fight this. The other issue is item, agenda item 28, um, when they talk about additional uh, homeless shelters, when they specifically mentioned uh, Skid Row, um, none of the I, uh, properties identified thus far are actually physically in Skid Row, so I don't know how they think people from Skid Row are going to trans transport over to these other areas. It doesn't even make any kind of logical sense. Uh, that is all. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. And I'm looking for Keith Nakata and Adam Vine and Delmira Gonzalez. Please come forward. I am youth pastor Jace Dawson. I'm with the Wall Lost Memorials Project. I work there as a community organizer. I live in South LA. I also work in downtown Los Angeles and the Highland Park area. I wanted to speak to you today because in our nation, we are a nation that's built on democracy and we don't want to lose sight of that. Here in the state of California, specifically in Los Angeles, we should utilize ourselves as leaders to make sure that we're absolutely including the public on matters of substance that interfere with our way of thinking a way of thinking that can drastically change our areas and our neighborhood. We have to make sure that we have the input of all of our communities when it comes to something as highly important as alcohol. We want to make sure that our vote counts and we want to make sure that the votes are not being misused by making sure that our voices are taken away. And in the midst of doing so, we want to make sure that our community is protected and that we are not doing something blindedly, uh, giving alcohol away to our, our youth and those in between causing more devastation to our communities and our surrounding areas. Thank you. Next speaker, please identify yourself. Good morning, my name is Margot Bennett and I'm the Executive Director of Women Against Gun Violence. Because you have on your agenda today, item 30, an initiative to curtail uh, the process of issuing liquor licenses by limiting public comment, I'm here today to remind you of the well-researched and documented link between gun violence and alcohol, and I encourage you to take a holistic approach to gun violence prevention. Please do not disenfranchise the community's voice by eliminating one of the ways that we can all work together to prevent gun violence. And as an aside, I also want to remind you that it took a year and a half to pass suicide prevention legislation. So I don't think a full and complete process to issue a liquor license, which takes a few months, is burdensome. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. 
Hello, Pamela Pearson. I reside in CD5. Today, I want to thank CD5 and four councilmen for their great efforts to curtail the party houses and all of the alcohol problems we've encountered. Number two, I want to encourage the city to consider when the uh, resources are expended to repair all of the chug holes on the street that they not be duplicitous simply by having your maintenance crews undercut those holes and then compact the materials and we would be able to take care of a lot more constituents. And third, Mr. Wesson, thank you for your assistance removing a high pressure gas line that a neighbor installed on my property and I hope that I will have your help getting my access to my property back soon. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hi, good morning, Keith Nakata. I'm with the Mid-City West Community Council Planning and Land Use Committee. I'm the co-chair, uh, which is in CD5 and CD4. I'm making personal comments today. Uh, I do not believe that over-the-counter CUPs are allowed under Charter Section 563 and require an initial determination to be made by a zoning administrator. Legal findings also must be made for CUPs stating that they're not detrimental to nearby residential zones or uses, that there is not an over-concentration of establishments. Uh, the, this is not guaranteed under this plan. Other issues such as rear patios abutting residential areas also can be problematic. Uh, I suggest that you consider these items before moving this forward. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Uh, yes, next please. Um, buenos dias a todos. Mi nombre es Delmira González. One minute. Oh, you're going to do it? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Um, good morning. Her name is Delmira González. Uh, yo vivo en Boyle Heights. She's a resident of Boyle Heights. Uh, yo estoy aquí porque me preocupa mucho uh, esta emoción. Emoción. She is here because she is very concerned about the motion. Es uh, la 170981. Motion 170981. Porque este si llega a pasar esta esta emoción, uh, entonces no nos van a tomar en cuenta a todos los residentes y van a poner a uh, todos los uh, pues todos los uh, uh, cosas que que se quieran uh, poner allí no van a tomar a los residentes en cuenta si así no nos toman en cuenta She is very concerned about this motion because then it will allow for businesses just to come in at any given time without taking them into consideration and as it is they already don't take them into consideration Y estamos aquí para que los concejales oigan todas nuestras preocupaciones y que nos apoyen para que esto no pase. Muchas gracias. And we're here today to make sure that all of you listen to us and hear us and take us into account because it is very important to our communities. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so are you Mr. Vine? Yes. So if I can get uh, Sarah Blanche, uh, Donna uh, Penn P, Nicole Minor, Gilbert Mora, Anna Hernandez, and Nicholas Patino. Yes, sir. Good morning. I'm Adam Vine, co-founder of Cage Free Cannabis and a resident of CD14. I'm speaking here today to urge you to allocate general funds to support the social equity program. The funds to arrest and prosecute people for cannabis crimes came from the general fund. The funds to help people disproportionately harmed by cannabis prohibition ought to come from the general fund as well. Subsidies for legal services, business and technical assistance, regulatory compliance, and other wraparound services are needed immediately. Earmark $30 million from the general fund and allow the social equity program to thrive. Instead of the collateral consequences of conviction, we'll see collateral benefits, job creation, local hiring, a reduction in the illicit market, and a diverse and democratized cannabis industry that is responsive to community needs. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next speaker, identify yourself. 
Good morning. My name is Sarah Blanche. I am the co-chair of the Los Angeles Drug and Alcohol Policy Alliance. We have over 30 organizational members representing all council districts. As many people this morning have reflected, uh, we're here in opposition to the over-the-counter on-site CUPs. There are currently over 990 businesses in the application process to be able to sell alcohol in Los Angeles. To, the current process is to allow for public input. Uh, right, local controls have been stripped on a regular basis. Perhaps the process does need to be easier for businesses, but the reality is residents need to be able to have input over this process. This new motion would not allow secret review. It would not allow for public input. It would not allow for appeals. Neighborhoods uh, are needing to have some modicum of checks and balances and having a voice. We ask respectfully this morning that the councils not support this motion. Absolutely, there needs to be public input into this very important process, period. Thank you. Next. Good morning, my name is Gilbert Mora. Uh, I'm from Behavioral Health Services, Inc., and also a member of LADAPA. And uh, I work in the Hollywood area, so over-concentration of uh, on-sale is very, very, very rampant there. Uh, we just recently had problems with a large development wanting 20 of these alcohol licenses, and to have a process where no input by the public will be allowed will really, really hinder our ability to say yes to these businesses, have some kind of input on how they operate and how they fit into our communities, especially in the Hollywood area where alcohol is already a large problem. So if you could just rethink this whole process and try to figure out a way to re-put the uh, community input into it and allow for the community to be able to be heard and actually listen to not just lip service and allow them to put these kind of I guess, restrictions that they feel is for their community. Thank you. Next speaker. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Ana Hernandez. I'm going to talk first in Spanish, and then he's going to translate in English. Thank you. Um, la razón que estamos aquí uh, como les dije, mi nombre es Ana Hernández, yo vengo del Distrito 14, Boyle High. Uh, nosotros estamos en contra de la, de la moción 170981, porque consideramos que es causa un gran impacto dentro de nuestra comunidad, porque no están, toma eh, no están considerando y no están tomando en cuenta las opiniones de las comunidades y no se va a presentar dentro de las comunidades esta moción. Entonces, por eso es un gran impacto. Considero que se tiene que tomar en cuenta la opinión de las comunidades. No solamente es presentar una moción y pasar. Um, she's here today, very concerned. She lives in Boyle Heights, uh, District 14. She's again, 170981 motion. Um, it is very important for the communities to be taken into consideration um, because this is what affects our communities and it, it's in our communities. So it is necessary that you guys take into account the communities that they will be serving and in the places where these places will be located. Ya suficiente, muchas cosas están pasando de, dentro de nuestras comunidades y yo creo que ya es tiempo de parar, que nos impongan cosas. También nosotros somos personas pensantes y sabemos lo que está pasando dentro de nuestras comunidades y por esta razón nos oponemos a esta moción. Thank you. Thank you. So okay. it's very important for you guys to consider the communities because it affects our communities. That's why we are against this motion. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Nicolas Patiño. I am a community organizer with the Wallace Memorials Project. I live in Southgate and I do work on substance abuse prevention in Boyle Heights and Southeast LA. I am commenting in my position uh, against the fast-tracked permits on item 30 not allowing community input for on-sale CUB alcohol permits takes us 
away an important voice and communities vulnerable and leaves community vulnerable to the negative impacts of high concentrations of on-site alcohol sales. One shoe does not fit all. Each application needs to be reviewed by the community so that there is a healthier environment in our communities. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I'd like to call up uh, Barry Cohen, Diane Allen, and Nicole Miner. Yeah, okay. Good morning. My name is Nicole Miner. I'm president of the Benedict Canyon Association, vice president of the Bel Air Beverly Crest Neighborhood Council. The community is very concerned about the proposition of having a fast track on-site liquor license. There's enough concerns in the community where we feel that liquor license disposition to be, should be more difficult instead of easier. Now that there's uh, an entire building on Hill Street devoted to marijuana so people can get high at will, then they can go get more alcohol at will. It's dangerous for the entire city. It, it, it should be tightened, absolutely tightened, not fast-tracked at all. And this would only be a slippery slope for places like mini-marts and gas stations near freeway entrances to put a table in their mini-mart and sell alcohol on, on site. So please consider stopping this motion. Thank, thank you. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, good morning, President. My name is Barry Cohan. I'm addressing this to Mr. Koretz. I want to, I want to ask you to vote against the Merrill's bid. This is not helping our businesses in there. They are one, this is one of our tenants. She's going out because of your extra taxes that you are imposing on us and you are extending this for 10 years, that is not justified. If you want, you can extend it for two years, three years, but 10 years, that is beyond the term of uh, your, uh, 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 the bed is not helping uh, the businesses in there, the trash bins, they attract roaches and are overfilled. The graffiti is not filled, and it is not helping the businesses at all. Thank you. So do I have Diane Allen? Diane Allen, Diane Allen. Okay, Mr. Herman. You've got items two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. In fact, all the way through 17. Then you have 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 39, 40, 41, and general public comment. And Mr. President. One second before you start. Before the public speaker begins, there have been amending motions distributed for council's consideration and posted on the board for 17A and 20A. Thank you. Um, Mr. City Attorney. Additionally, I understand there's going to be a Rule 23 uh, circulated, um, and I would like to state what that's about in case any of the speakers want to comment on it. Um, so on June 22nd of this year, the council approved a list of final projects for the city's priorities for pursuing Caltrans Active Transportation Cycle 4 projects for grant award funding. Yesterday, uh, the city was informed by uh, County Metro that there'll be an $18 million increase in the blue line first mile, last mile projects, which includes some of the things that the city wants to fund. Um, the city, as part of the application, which is due today, uh, would be responsible for 20% uh, matching of the funds. The increase is $18 million. Um, included in what the city wants to fund are pedestrian and bicycle infrastructure at the Washington, Vernon, and Sloshen stations and at the 103rd Watts and Willowbrook and Rosa Park stations. Additionally, the Port of LA is no longer planning to apply for three projects. 
in light of the increased cost and the city's 20% uh, commitment um, for the funds, it's been requested out of an abundance of caution that the council reconfirm its commitment to apply for this, which is due today. Um, so if we do that, um, we will make findings under government code 54954.2 and we'll take public comment and eventually we'll vote on it. So I, I think that what we should do now is we should um, take public comment on this for anybody who wants to so that it's dealt with as part of the multiple comment segment. Okay, that's exactly what we're gonna do. Okay, Mr. Herman. So you see what effective communication truly is? Planning under comprehensive jobs to add more alcohol to your streets on item 30? That's real good because I know of an alcoholic by the name of Jose Weizar who has a bar license. Let's stay on the subject. Well, let's go to 40 then. Motion 40, CD 14, funding for downtown Los Angeles, but yet we have a population of homeless people who have no transportation to get around town. Thank you, Hugo Rossiter, back there for that. Only $327,000 paid by James M. Wood, or is it Woody, like my Woody? And then you go to item 41, motion of Joe Asso Buschiano and Big Ears Englander funding for the police. Well, you all know what the NWA says about the police. Fuck the police. They don't need money. They need to be retrained to de-escalate the killings of the overtime on civilians who live on the street that are homeless. In addition to all this fucking shit, I keep telling you over and over about the liens. Why is it that I have to pay for a lien that's constitutional protection from your harassment, retaliation, intimidation, but yet Herman Jason Wesson can't pay for his credit cards? CD 9, 5109 South Long Beach Avenue, talking about the bigamist, Mr. Price, why can't you waive the lien? I'm here in protest against that because it is unconstitutional to put a lien on someone's property when the president can't pay his fucking bills. Now general public comment. Let's give him his one minute. To those I oppose are dead. Just to those I justified. You and I wear and swear on the badge. Fuck the police that the dead is shall and be justified by the nigger, you the police. Wearing the fucking motherfucking badge, wearing the fucking mother badge, wearing the fucking mother badge. Why? Because you rather put me down under 42 USC 14141 like the Baltimore police. So fuck the police of LA and fuck you, Hugo Rossiter. Don't put my friend Wayne Spindler behind bars simply for waving his hands on constitutional protection. 42 USC 1983, fuck the draft, and fuck you, Herman Jason Wesson, for denying me access with all these barriers. Remove these ropes, and don't call me an end, because I'll tell you, fool, pay your goddamn bills, and pay your Thank goddamn you. lien. Thank you. If I could get Miss McAllister. Miss McAllister. You've got uh, two minutes on uh, general public comment. I mean, I'm sorry. You have item a minute on item 39 and item 40, and then you get another minute for your general public comment. A couple of the items that uh, you signed up for public comment was already satisfied, satisfied. So you have 39, 40, and then your general public comment. Go ahead. I can't speak on 28 like the other people did. They did that. You can do that on general public comment. No, okay. Forget it. I'll talk That's about what it. they did. Okay, Go ahead. Um, I did ask for an information request for the city attorneys, um, the 800 that your budget says you have, and what I got was 500. Where are the other 300? Okay, so I've got some fraud right there. You on the budget say you have 800. They gave me a list of 500. You right there, Stefan. 
What's your last name, city attorney? So, so this Excuse is, me. So we are, are we on general public comment? Because it's not one of the agenda items that you're talking about. Listen, sir, I can do whichever I want. No, 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 no. So what do you, 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 uh, you get, why don't you do the items and then we'll do your general public you're comment? Because you're not now. on the item. You're taking my time. Okay, item number 39. Um, I think that we should not be giving these council members money and they're not being specific. You want to do this for the community, you want to do that, you're very vague about everything. Item number 27, um, 40, the same thing. You want money for your community, but you're not telling us what you're, what you're using it for. And I, I've been doing a lot of research on budgets and whatnot, and I see that those are the areas where corruption and embezzlement of funds occurs quite often in these um, uh, agenda items where you're asking for funding, like here, downtown number 40. They, now, how can you ask a developer of one project to fund $327,000 for another project? I'm on number, on number 40. That's a conflict of interest. This man is already on a James M. Wood project, and you're asking him, and he's giving you $327,000 $327, for some kind of research on Skid Row. That's a conflict of interest. This council, this mayor, all of you gonna be out of a job soon. All of you. I've been doing research, I haven't been here, but I've been doing legal research and everything else. And what I'm finding is astounding. I'm shocked. And the reason you're giving up this alcohol, all these alcohol. Thank you. Okay, let's give her her minute for general public comment. The reason you're giving up, giving up all these alcohol permits is to keep people drunk and to keep people on weed. Anybody who smoked this weed, you must know that these Government officials are putting chemicals in it. If you're going to smoke it, grow your own. Now, back to this, these lawyers. There's something called the ghost employee scheme. And based on what I found, when you told us in the budget that you have 800 attorneys, and I asked for all attorneys who are making over 108,000, the new ones are making 106,000. So I should have 800 attorneys. We short 300, and you're still hiring them. Now, there's something called the ghost employee scheme, and the controllers are involved. What they do is they put people on the payroll who don't exist, and that money is funneled through. They send checks or they deposit. It's funneled to somebody totally different, and it ends up in somebody else's pocket. Based on what I have done this research, there is ghost employee schemes going on, and the controller is involved. This is what I think. This is what I found. I can prove it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Spindler? Mr. Spindler, okay, uh, for the record, I called Mr. Spindler. He's not here. Ms. Pierman, Donna Pierman. In fact, before she comes up, uh, let's vote on uh, a few items here. Let's vote on item, Madam Clerk, 11, 14, 15, 16, and 18. If you would open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. Now let's vote on items 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, and 42. Please open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. Wait, Jeff. 12 ayes. Thank you. Okay, uh, Ms. Pierman, you have item two, 39 and 40, then your general public comment. Uh, number two, I wanna say, our lien, that was one lien that did not get work out. Of course, our president gets to fold on his credit cards. Our city council doesn't bring up liens, but he gets to not have his credit credit cards paid. People have to eventually pay for their liens and our president has to pay for his credit cards. It's simple, stupid. Cause and effect. Pay what you owe. Wave your hands, people, if you agree with me. Yes, so that's that on that. And, uh, I, well, by the way, I pay for my credit cards and I put Ms. it all Pierman, in one spot. Ms. get on the subject, okay? Number 39. We're back off of that. So, um, I'm not sure exactly what the funding is support community groups and council number six. I hope you think of the normal American people that are in your district and come up with projects 
that will benefit the whole community and not just benefit a few. And uh, downtown loss transportation, transportation study, I'm tired of paying for all of these, uh, all of the subway projects, uh, tearing up the streets of Wilshire Boulevard, da going to downtown. We have time, we have to stop tearing up our streets and putting up large projects of all these bullet trains and coming up with large projects, even extending the purple line. But in the meantime, we're screwing up uh, Los Angeles. It takes me a lot longer to be get downtown. It takes me over, like, over an hour to go from West Los Angeles to downtown if I want to take the subway. So uh, let's not use all the transportation money on the subways and use it on our local buses. We need money for our local buses, so we stop having buses that run only once an hour. I'm getting on several buses that runs only once an hour. If we miss it, you're really tough out a lot. So that's what I'd say. So uh, stop the bullet train, and let's stop the spending all our money on our subways. Now, can I go to public comment? Give her her general public comment minute. Uh, number, this November is a time when we choose who we want our representatives, our assembly, our congressmen, and our governor. We want to vote with them intelligence and well thought study of our measures and who we vote for, who will take care of the Americans, our, oh, our families, uh, who will make up prosper, have safe, compassionate communities not have socialist rad radical agendas and rights to criminals and lawbreakers and have chaos everywhere. We want to vote for Republicans, vote for Americans, especially, um, they, they are especially good for, geared to low to middle class Americans. Remember, vote for Ricardo Benitez for Assembly 39. We want to vote for Benito Brunel, not Cardenese. And we want to vote for Republican for governor. And everybody Republican, vote Republican! Okay, thank you. If I could get Mr. Gus, items 40, 41 in general public comment. Mr. Wesson, I'm going to go right to general public comment. Let's give him his one minute for general public comment. Council members, my name is Daniel Gus. I have the number one most viewed article on City Watch this morning. You have to replace Mr. Wesson as council president. As I have shown in City Watch, Mr. Wesson was sued for welshing on his Discover credit card. He didn't show. He lost. If Mr. Wesson wants to open a bank in Los Angeles, he needs to know how to pay his mortgage, which he hasn't. He needs to know how to pay his credit card, which he hasn't. Mr. Wesson also failed to report his wife's income from the South Coast AQMD on his ethics forms. Mr. Wesson also pilfered LAPD security at his son's wedding, and he has to not be treated differently than any other party. Mr. Wesson needs to go back to being a council member for CD10, step down from the presidency. Unfortunately, Mr. Englander does not have the temperament to be council president. Therefore, Ms. Martinez should be the new LA City Council president. And Mr. Wesson, you know that this story- Thank you. There's more Thank you, Mr. Gus. Thank you. Okay, let's go. Item 17. Item 17, Daria Nunez, Lupe Ruelas, Sucuro Vasquez, Miguel Vargas, Lete Galvan, Delmyra Gonzalez, Ana Hernandez. Item 17. And as the speakers make their way forward, again, 17, motion 17A, the amending motion has been distributed and circulated for council's consideration. If we can get our uh, translation. When 
Buenos días, mi nombre es Ariel Núñez y yo soy residente. Good morning, my name is Ariel Núñez. Y yo soy residente de Pico Garden. And I am resident on Pico Garden. Y estoy aquí para pedirles el apoyo a todos ustedes. And I am here seeking your support to all of, from all of you guys. Por el proyecto que tienen en nuestra comunidad. From the project that you guys have in our community. Tenemos en muy malas condiciones los postes de la luz. Our electrical posts are in very bad conditions. Las banquetas Sidewalk, también. Sidewalks as well. Y con este proyecto que están haciendo del puente nuevo que vamos a hacer en las seis. And with this project that you guys are doing with the uh, bridge on sixth. Va a haber más familias que van a estar transitando por esa comunidad. More families are going to be walking by that community. Y queremos seguridad para nuestras familias. And we want safety for our families. Queremos también que los postes se aprueben para que vayan subterráneos los cables. We also want that electrical post be approved so that, the so that the electrical lines go underground. Para que nuestra comunidad esté segura en un caso de emergencia. So that our community is safe in case of an emergency. Gracias. Thank you. Buenos días a todos los aquí presentes. We, good morning to all of the present here. Soy residente de aquí de Boyle Heights. I am resident from Boyle Heights. La calle 6. On 6th Street. Yo me siento muy emocionada. I am very happy. Por los trabajos que ustedes, con su ayuda y su apoyo. For all the work that you guys have done with your help and support. No se olvidan de nosotros porque somos seres humanos también. Sentimos el dolor, sufrimos. You never forget about us because we also are humans and we feel the pain and we suffer. Le doy las gracias a todos ustedes por su esfuerzo. I thank all of you for the effort. Aunque son muy criticados y atacados. Even though you guys Dios are. Los cuide y los bendiga. Even though you guys are very criticized, God bless you and takes care of you. Por su trabajo, porque no se olvidan de nosotros, los más desprotegidos. Y por las generaciones que vienen. Gracias. Dios los bendiga. God blesses you for the work that you guys do. God, God bless you. And what was her name? ¿Cómo se llama, señora? ¿Cómo se llama? ¿Cómo se llama? ¿Cuál es su nombre? Perdón, mi nombre es Socorro Vázquez. I'm sorry, my name is Socorro Vázquez. Thank you. Disculpen la emoción. Gracias. I am sorry for the emotion. Thank you. Buenos días. Good morning. Mi nombre es Leticia Galván. My name is Leticia Galván. Soy inquilino de Boyle Heights. I am a tenant from Boyle Heights. Por 40 años. For 40 years. Y estoy muy contenta en, ese, en esa comunidad. And I am very happy in that community. Distrito 14. Belonging to district y number 14. Y nuestra petición es precisamente para que esos postes, que esos cables queden subterráneos. Our petition is precisely so that electrical cables go underground. Porque muchas banquetas están muy angostas. Because, because many sidewalks are very narrow. Y el peligro es muchas personas que tienen sillas de ruedas de incapacitadas. And there is a lot of danger because there are so many people in wheelchair. Que están con el peligro de caerse a la orilla por tan chiquita las banquetas. And they may fall on the side because the sidewalks are very narrow. Muchas gracias y es, es, esperamos que escuchen nuestra petición. Gracias. Thank you very much and we hope you hear our petition. Thank you. Muy buenos días. Good morning. Mi nombre es Guadalupe Ruelas. My name is Guadalupe Ruelas. Y vengo a apoyar para que tomen en cuenta nuestras necesidades. And I, and I am here to support so that you can take in consideration our petitions. Vengo de Boyle Heights. I come from Boyle Heights. Tengo 40 años de vivir en Pico Garden. I've been living for 40 years in Pico Garden. Soy una persona que me gusta caminar. I am someone who likes to walk. Y veo las necesidades que hay en nuestras calles. And I see the needs that we have in our streets. Por eso vengo a apoyar para that's, que tomen en cuenta nuestras necesidades. That's why, I'm, that, that's why I'm here in support so that you can take in consideration our needs. Thank you very much. Buenos días a todos. Mi nombre es Delmira González. Good y, morning, y everyone. Vengo de Boyle Heights, del and distrito am, 14. And I am Delmira González, and I live in Boyle Heights from district number 14. 
Y tengo más de 40 años viviendo en Pico Gardens. And I, I, I have more than 40 years living in Pico Gardens. Y yo estoy aquí para que, uh, para que den los fondos para que vaya el cableado por abajo de los postes uh, de, que son de madera. And I, and I am here so that you guys can give the funds so that all the electrical cable, cables go underground. Porque es un peligro, porque los postes ya están muy en, uh, en malas condiciones y las banquetas son muy angostas because, para... Because it is very dangerous, because the posts are, the electrical posts are very old and the sidewalks are very narrow. A veces uno no puede uh, caminar por las banquetas porque a veces lleva uno el carrito de los uh, niños. Sometimes yeah. we cannot walk on the sidewalks because sometimes we have the stroller. Tan angostas que son que a veces se pone uno en peligro muy a la orilla y a veces los carros están pasando muy fuerte. They're so narrow that sometimes we get into danger and the, uh, the, the, the cars pass by very fast. Y nosotros necesitamos pues esa seguridad porque cuando hay también temblores también uh, es muy peligroso. And Gracias. we also need that safety because we also when we have earthquakes is very dangerous. Thank you. Thank you. Gracias a usted. Uh, buenos días. Good morning. Mi es Ana Hernández. My Yo name is Ana Hernández, and I am resident from Boyle Heights. He vivido por muchos años en Pico I've Gardens, been living there for many casitas. years in Pico Gardens and Las Casitas. I am one of the persons who have been working very hard en esta comunidad. in this community. Y nosotros hemos visto and we've seen Los que all la the projects the city is proposing in the communities sido, uh, and how they have been affected. Que esta que we hope that this proposal that you guys are achieving, uh, uh, que están that you guys para, are proposing para to para get funds este plan, for this plan, que sea que sea hopefully para la it benefits the community. El desarrollo del puente de la calle de la calle Sexta the con el desarrollo on, on del Sixth puente Street due to the uh, bridge ha afectado bastante nuestra comunidad has affected a lot our community y ya no queremos más a uh, que esté impactando nuestra comunidad we don't we don't want more bad impact in our community en este momento está mucho restricciones para at this nuestra, time there's so many restrictions thank you for our youth and elders. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you. That's your time. Thank you. Next speaker, please identify yourself. Yes, uh, good morning, uh, Mr. President. Good morning, council members. My name is Miguel Vargas. I am the director of the Arts District Business Improvement District. Thank you for hearing this item. This is a very important item to us in the Arts District. I've had uh, an opportunity to speak with a lot of property owners, and I can tell you that a, a lot of people are very excited about this. This is a huge investment into our community. Uh, not only is it, a, is it a great thing for the Arts District, it's a great thing for Boyle Heights. It'll improve the area all around the Sixth Street Viaduct. So I urge you today to please support this item. Thank you very much. That closes public comment, so let's prepare to vote on this item. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. Mr. Walsh, John Walsh. John, you have t items 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13 in general public comment. John Walsh, blogging at hollywoodhighlands.org, J. Walsh Confidential, tweeting at Hollywood Dems. Uh, I'd like to go uh, straight to my public, general public comment. Uh, Let's go straight to his general public comment. Today is the last day the Times has to get their asses out of the building by 
midnight on the 31st. Uh, I'm telling you, this neighborhood is going to turn into a slum without the LA Times. The crime is going to go up. That building is, a, is a, they wanted a million dollars rent, the owners of the building. And you know what? Uh, it isn't worth a million dollars. I'm telling you right now that the Times is in big trouble. It's falling apart, but we have a new person to run it. Hey, all you white people who think the brown people are taking over, they're not taking over. The yellow people are taking over. They're the ones with billions and billions. And take it right now. Patrick Sheung is the editor of the Times. Okay, is the thank you. Of the Times. Thank you. That closes uh, public comment. Uh, item four. Richard Hajijian, Esther Eisenstein, please come forward. Yes, sir. Good morning. I'm going to make this quick. I've got a minute. Um, I would want to go on record to let the council know that I am in favor of the bid. The problem is we have found that the people that are running the bid are very deceptive. There's nepotism on the board. They keep talking about the Brown Act, and they do not follow it in any way, shape, or form. If this bid gets passed tomorrow, it'll go to the district attorney's office or the city attorney. Because when we ask for records, when we ask for comments to other people, we get nothing. We get stonewall. When we ask for reports on bank accounts, we get two or three, but not all of it. It's just wrong. And I'm asking that, this, this, that the council would not eliminate the bid, but give the bid an opportunity so that we could understand how this money is being misused on a monthly basis. Uh, my family, personally, will pay over $65,000 for the next 10 Thank years. Thank you. If I could get the next speaker. This is ridiculous. Hi, my name is Esther Eisenstein. I own a property in the Bid District. Uh, it, is, it has not one foot, not one foot of my property is on Melrose. Yet we pay one of the largest assessments, 60 0.67%. We are a 12-unit residential apartment building with quiet, law-abiding tenants. We are one of two residential buildings in this bid district. Uh, I brought this up five years ago to D Donald Duckworth and the council, and they said they would give me consideration because I received none of the promised improvements. Uh, I was promised tree trimming of a ficus tree that was breaking up my sidewalk and growing to an enormous proportions, and I paid for that resurfacing of the concrete myself and paid $1,900 to trim the tree. I also asked that Thank the you. holes in my alleyway. Thank you. Thank you. Your time's expired. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Uh, uh, Herman, please keep it down. Okay, Mr. Spindler, you're on this item. Go ahead. Yes, uh, William R. Goat, representing Discover Card Corporation. Mr. So anyway, Spindler, stick on the subject. <laughs> that was funny. Yes, now... Let's talk about this bullshit. People are not living in a bid, and they're being illegally taxed. People who are white are beginning to complain. 
You've stolen everything from the blacks and Latinos. Now you're after the Jews and their money. And me, as a white puppet, say, fuck you and fuck the bid. We need to stop this shit. Even when old people from Sherman Oaks drive all the way down here, they can barely see. They can barely drive. They're on their last breath. So please, stop killing them with taxes. Stop killing them. Finally, you can charge it on your Thank Discover you. card. Thank you. Thank you. Stay there, Mr. Spindler. Mr. Spindler, stay there. Let's uh, vote on this item. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. Twelve eyes. Okay, Mr. Spindler, we called you earlier. You weren't here. We're going to give you your um, uh, general public comment minute now. So as you see, Mr. Spindler's father used to run a collection agency long ago, and his mother ran the Petrie Collection Agency. And what did we know? It's a deadbeat club. Yes, the B-52s. It's the deadbeat club. Deadbeat club. Her blessing is a deadbeat, deadbeat club. He's the deadbeat club, deadbeat club. He doesn't pay his Discover bill, deadbeat club. He uses LAPD security for his son's wedding for free. He has a guest list of people he blackmails who don't show up to the wedding. And the LA Times covers it up while he blackmails Jackie Lacey at the same time. Mafia control. They're the deadbeat club. Deadbeat club. Thank you, Mr. Spindler. Thank you. Let's now vote on items, uh, Madam Clerk, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Please open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. Twelve eyes. Now let's vote on 12, 13, 39, 40, and 41. Please open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 12 eyes. Is Miss Richardson here? Jacqueline Richardson, come on up, Miss Richardson. And Mr. President, as the speaker makes her way forward, for the record on items two through five, the public hearing is now closed and the ballot tabulation results will be announced tomorrow. Thank you. with you and I may be wrong about it. The mayor of Los Angeles voted on the wrong platform. He voted on the presidential ballot, which meant that his candidacy went through all the communities, including Los Angeles County. Uh, he could have asked the people to extract just Los Angeles County for the votes, if, and it would have been all right, but I'm not sure what he did. The county of Los Angeles supervisors uh, instead of voting on the uh, large uh, platform that the mayor did, they voted on a smaller platform. Uh, they needed to get on the platform that the mayor was on that went through all the counties, all the little cities in Los Angeles, the 80 cities in Los Angeles. I don't believe they did that. In this last election, uh, there's one supervisor that got on the governor's candidate uh, ballot, and that's correct because it goes through all the counties, and the sheriff's department also went through that larger platform. The, uh, this body, I don't know how, if the, what platform they're going to be on. If you get on the platform where they just take out uh, Los Thank Angeles. you, Ms. Richardson. Is Mr. Anderson here? Donnie Anderson? Okay, that closes general public comment. Let's vote on item 20. As amended, let's open the row, close the row, tabulate the vote. 12 eyes.
City Attorney. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. President. So as you know, um, I indicated that there was going to be a Rule 23 special number one item. Uh, there was. Or? We've already taken public comment on it. So what we need to do is to vote on the findings per Government Code Section 54954.2. Um, and then since we've taken the comment, we can then vote on the substance of the item immediately. Okay, the first vote. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. Now let's vote on the issue itself. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. Uh, let's send this forthwith. That brings us where? Council has motions for posting a referral. Okay, they are posted and they are referred. Announcements, members. Again, I want to welcome everybody back and ask if there are any announcements. No announcements. If we would all rise, if we would all rise for adjourning motions. If we would all rise for adjourning motions. Please, you don't have to stand up, but you do have to be quiet. So please keep it down, Mr. Spindler and Mr. Herman. Shh. Okay, uh, Mr. Uh, I've already warned uh, the two of them, if you would remove Mr. Uh, Spindler. In fact, uh, if we could hold off on this one, I'll tell you when to pull, bring that photo up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna defer, I'm gonna defer to uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Kokori, I mean Mr. Koretz first. Mr. Uh, City Attorney, where uh, the chambers is being disturbed by Mr. Spindler and Mr. Uh, Herman. Indeed they which are. Is, they are continuing to disturb this council as we're trying to adjourn. Uh, Mr. Uh, Spindler and Mr. Herman are continuing, continuing to disrupt this meeting. They are continuing to disrupt this yeah. meeting as they're exiting there. They had to be removed by security, our sergeants. You know, this is a very, uh, a very important moment when we adjourn in the memory of people who have made their transitions. So that's why I ask if all would rise in the council chambers and please be quiet. These are individuals who've lived a life, have made many accomplishments to make this city and this country a better city. And the least that we can do is be respectful to their memory. That's why we do not allow people to act out when we are a journey. With that said, Mr. Koretz. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I know Mr. Wiesard joins me in adjourning today in the memory of Jonathan Gold, the Pulitzer Prize winning Los Angeles Weekly and LA Times restaurant critic, who was one of the most celebrated and perhaps more importantly, one of the most appreciated voices of the city. Jonathan wrote about restaurants for more than three decades and became an influential cultural ambassador for the city in which he was born and raised. I think it's fair to say that his journey to being the only Pulitzer Prize winning food critic began in his 20s when he set out to eat at least once at every restaurant on Pico Boulevard starting with downtown. He only made it as far as Century City, but for 32 years, Angelinos reaped the rewards of what he learned along the way. Some food critics simply write about food, but
Jonathan Gold wrote about the people, the cultures, and the neighborhoods of the Los Angeles region through the lens of food. He's been described as the first guy to change the focus from white tablecloth restaurants to really cool little places and strip malls. He always seemed to be after a larger theme with his writing, showing us how despite our perceived differences in Los Angeles, we are all truly indelibly connected by food. As he put, himself, as he put it himself in the 2015 City of Gold documentary made about him, we are all citizens of the world, strangers together. Inspired by his brother, Mark Gold, Heal the Bay's then president, Jonathan also did a little environmental work on the side. Uh, I'm sure he didn't know it, but he and I ended up working together to support the same legislation in 2011, a statewide ban on shark fin sales. His remarkable op-ed entitled Taste of Extinction ended up helping push Assemblymember Paul Fong's bill across the finish line and thereby saved the lives of thousands of sharks and helped grow the global shark conservation movement. What he meant to Los Angeles was apparent this past Saturday night when, on the occasion of what would have been his 58th birthday, City Hall and other landmarks across the region, including Union Station, the Broad, the Natural History Museum, the pylons at LAX, Pasadena City Hall, and the Pacific Wheel on Santa Monica Pier, all lit up with gold lights to say goodbye. He died a tragically young 57 years old from pancreatic cancer, um, which unfortunately I have personal experience with since my mother also died of that and not a way that you want to go. Um, he died at St. Vincent Medical Center on the evening of July 21st. And in addition to legions of elite Angelinos, he'll be missed by his wife and LA Times editor, Lori Ochoa, his daughter, Isabel, his son, Leon, and his brothers, Josh and Mark Gold. And Mark, you may know, in addition to serving as one of Mayor Garcetti's appointed directors on the Metropolitan Water District Board, is the associate director of UCLA's Institute of the Environment and Sustainability. Due to Jonathan's untimely death, a GoFundMe campaign has been set up to help his family cover immediate expenses and provide for Izzy and Leon's education. And I would ask for any memorial donations to go in that direction. And he will be sorely, sorely missed by so many people. Thank you, Mr. Kares. Uh Mr. Wizar. Thank you. Mr. President, I just wanted to add that uh, Mr. Gold did a lot for the food culture, but also he did a lot for Los Angeles in terms of recognizing the richness of all our communities. We often celebrate um, Los Angeles in a certain way, and we've developed a reputation as a certain type of city. But oftentimes, uh, a lot of our communities and contributions for people in those communities are overlooked. And what Gold did is brought them to the forefront, whether it was about talking about street vendors in Boyle Heights or a great southern restaurant in South LA. Um, he brought to the forefront all of Los Angeles and in our communities uh, that have often been overlooked. Uh, you know, his name resonates with many because people would say, did you see that article about us? Did you see that article about that great restaurant that we go to? And uh, that's something that he contributed as well, not only bringing us together as Angelinos, but acknowledging that we are a diverse uh, uh, city with richness throughout. And uh, he uh, has contributed much more than we know right now. In the future, we'll look back and look at his many writings and contributions and discover different subtleties that he was putting in his writings about what is Los Angeles. So thank you, Mr. Peretz, for your words. Mr. Cedillo. I'd just like to be added to that. Uh, I had an opportunity to hang out with him a couple times, and uh, both he and, and someone like Anthony Bourdain teach us a lot. They teach us about being open to other people's culture, uh, about embracing people where they're at, not trying to change them, but taking them uh, as they are, including their, their food and their drink. And uh, uh, he's a guy, we would say, he's a really cool dude. He was uh, someone you could hang out with, uh, spend time with, uh, have a few beverages and, uh, uh, you know, and some food. And he's just a really, really cool dude, cool guy to hang out with. And I, I appreciated him. Uh, what an incredible loss for the city, as has been indicated. 
by our colleagues. And tragically, uh, he left so quickly that uh, unprepared, his family unprepared for that, so we should all do all that we can on the go, uh, uh, GoFundMe and, and do all that we can to help him and his family, because he was a gem and a jewel for the city. Thank you. And he was a good dude, Mr. Cedillo. So to the clerk's office, if we could make that three signatures. Uh, Mr. Price, now then Mr. Englander. I'd also like to uh, ask that we adjourn in memory of a dear friend, uh, Louis Marino. I never knew him as that, but just Lou. Everybody just knew him as Lou, and he was loved by everybody, and he was loved because of the stories that he would tell. He had a thousand stories about growing up poor in Brooklyn and a family, and he believed that he had an advantage over those others because of the way that, in fact, he grew up, a lot of, a lot of which uh, I know many of us can relate to. He was proud of being a poor Italian kid from Brooklyn and even prouder to be an American. Uh, it gave him the drive to chase the American dream by opening up his own business, selling copy machines. In fact, he was selling them door to door. It, he, it wasn't about, for him, selling copy machines, and if you knew Lou, it was just about meeting people, and, uh, and he loved meeting people. He believed it could make people happy and also help support his family in doing so and, and help them as well. He started his copier business in 1968 from his garage in Northridge. Uh, with an Opal station wagon he bought for 500 bucks and an unwavering faith of his wife of 58 years, Lucille. With no clients, he knocked on the doors of businesses throughout the San Fernando Valley and gradually built a successful business. When his partner Eric joined him in the 80s, the business grew exponentially. That success allowed Lou the time to travel, coach Little League, and spend countless hours with youth, youth charities uh, throughout uh, the San Fernando Valley. He loved to play Santa Claus. In fact, uh, we all remember him for this because he did so for 45 Christmases from 1971 to 2016. He'd go to parties and schools, local charities, organizations, the LA Children's Hospital, PALS, the YMCA, St. Vincent's, uh, Meals on Wheels and Mend to be Santa Claus uh, to all those kids, thousands and thousands and thousands of families. Uh, he also loved baseball. He followed the Dodgers from Brooklyn to LA and, and that really consumed a lot of his passion as well. He coached his boys little league winning two championships when their baseball careers ended. He coached for another 20 years after they left with his friends because they loved the game so much and loved helping youth sports. He attended CSUN baseball games and uh, players knew him all by name. And um, he loved talking to his family and uh, he took them to Italy to visit their home in St. Francis in the city of Assisi. 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 I haven't been to Assisi yet. We'll have to go, Joe. Assisi in 2009. It fulfilled his lifelong dream of bringing his family there, which he did. And for decades, he proudly wore his St. Francis High School ring and would continually proclaim the blessing uh, of his education. He made sure each of his grandchildren had the same blessings. And he, he loves his, loved his children and his grandchildren so much. He always made it home. Every single day, no matter what was going on at the office, no matter what was happening, at 6.15 sharp, he walked in the door, no matter what. And the whole idea was that he wanted his whole family every day, no matter what, to have dinner together. That was the most important meal of the day to him, and it was a time for storytelling. He would tell all the stories, in fact, of when he went door to door selling copiers. Every time he met somebody new, that would be his story at dinner, about their life, about who he met, and he could share that with his family. And uh, in fact, the saying was, that's what Italian families do, damn it. And that's what he would always say, is Italian families dine together. They have dinner together. And it's the most important thing. Um, Lou was a dear friend. And um, he will be missed, I know, by many. Certainly his laughter, uh, all his storytelling. Uh, it's going to be tough to go through Christmases without him as Santa. And uh, he made our community a much better place than he found it. May he rest in peace.
Thank well you. done, Mr. Englander. I'm going to close out uh, today's adjourning motion. There was a photo that was yes, sir. members. There's a television show. I think it's called Undeniable. It's with uh, a guy named Joe Buck, and he interviews great athletes. And one of these athletes came on the show, and he said that there are two important days in a person's life the day that you're born and the day that you discover why you were born. Members, I rise to adjourn in the memory of the man who helped me discover the reason why I was born. If you look at this photograph. In life, some of us it takes half a lifetime to figure out what we're going to do. Some of us, we never figure out what we, our purpose is. For some of us, it takes a moment. And the reason why I pulled this photograph out, this photograph is so important for me. And if those of you don't know which one I am, I'm the short one. Within about 12 minutes of this photograph being taken on my college campus, my entire life changed, and I knew the very reason why I was placed on this earth. The man, the tall, handsome, classy man, is the former mayor of Oakland. He is one of the greatest congressional folk from the Oakland, Berkeley area, first elected in 1971. Those are my fraternity brothers. He is my fraternity brothers. And we invited him to the school to give a lecture. Now, I, was, I would hope you guys would consider me a good member, because I would do just about anything for each and every one of you. And my members of my fraternity considered me a good member, but they also said I was rudderless, that I had no purpose, that I had skills, but I had no purpose. So they always tried to make me do stuff I didn't want to do. In this picture, I'm part of the escort that is showing this man all around campus. And also, I had to walk in as he gave his luck lecture, and I had to sit in the very front row. They made me do that because what I historically would do was sit in the back, and when the guys would start speaking, I would s sneak out. Couldn't do it. Mr. Bonin, Mr. O'Farrell, when he began to speak about human rights and civil rights back in 1973, building coalitions, Mr. Cedillo, of Latinos and Asians and blacks and, and whites. When he talked in 1973 about the importance of women getting the same pay that men get, when he talked about forming partnerships with gays and lesbians, within 10 minutes of his speech, I turned to my fraternity brothers and I said, that's what I'm going to be. This is the moment that my life changed. This is the moment that put me around this horseshoe. He talked about the dream of America, that America is an idea. I learned that. You guys hear me say that. I learned that in 1973. He talked about judging people based on their deeds and their actions, not on the... 
I use that all the time. I heard that from him. Changed my life. Now, I was fortunate enough, and I'm going to end it now, to be elected, selected Speaker of the California State Assembly. Mr. Koretz was one of my supporters, and Mr. Koretz was there. Mr. Cedillo was one of my supporters, and Mr. Cedillo was on, there on the day that I was spor sworn in. Imagine this, members. I walk into the assembly. No staff told me anything. And I look sitting next to my mother is Ron Dellums because they told him that he inspired me. And he came all the way from Washington, D.C. to see me selected to be the second man of color in the history of the state to be elected speaker. And when I told my story in front of the other members, you know what he did? He cried. And my mother sat next to him crying. So I want to rise and acknowledge the man that has given me the best job that I ever, ever had in my life, which is being a public servant, trying to make people happy. Some days it works, other days it doesn't. But this man changed my life, and this photo represents that moment in time when I was a rudderless college senior to a very determined and focused young man. So, uh, Congressman, Mayor, thank you for not just what you did for me, but what you've done for this country. With that said, this meeting's adjourned. Well, 99% of our clients are longshoremen. Then the other